Hey everybody, I just wanted to give a quick word on the voice unit uh, about how to analyze poetry. In this unit, you guys are going to be analyzing two different poets, uh, Emily Dickinson and Langston Hughes. Emily Dickinson lived in the 19th century, Langston Hughes lived in the 20th century, um, and they had some great poetry, um, but uh, some of you might not know quite how to analyze a poem. And uh, I've got a pretty foolproof method, method that allows you to analyze a poem pretty well and also uh, allows you to uh, sound really intelligent while you're analyzing in poem. So I think I think that's that's basically the goal. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. That's five good questions. You know, sometimes you just you're just walking, you're just uh, looking at poetry, and you you come across a poem like this. So it's the Red Wheelbarrow. It's by William Carlos Williams. He wrote at the turn of the 20th century, and it's tiny. I mean, look at this thing. Uh, so much depends upon a red real barrel glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. What the heck does this mean? And you just have no idea how to how to approach it, no idea how to figure it out. It's just a simple, it's, it's not even a sentence, right? It doesn't even have a capital letter or anything like that. Well, there's five questions that you should ask uh, every time that you read a poem. And the key, one of the key things is that a poem is not meant to be read only once. Uh, poems, you know, they tend to be shorter. They're, tend to, they're, they're supposed to be read and reread uh, to kind of get the meaning out of them, as opposed to text where you can read it once and then maybe read it a second time to, to get a bit deeper, but you probably won't read it many more times than that. Uh, the five questions I want you to ask about a poem is, number one, what is a summary of the poem? What happens in the poem? Number two, what figure of language do you hear in the poem? In other words, uh, what figure of language uh, do you, d is pleasing to your ear? Uh, things like alliteration, consonants, assonance. Uh, what figure of language do you see in the poem? Things like metaphors, similes, what actually gives you an image in your brain? What effect does the figurative language have on the poem? What does it do? This, in many, in many times, is, is the most important question. Uh, what is the figurative language actually doing in the poem? How is, it, how is it actually communicating a message? And then, what themes are covered in the poem? What is the poem about? And once you answer all five questions, you can have a pretty good viewpoint of what exactly is going on in the poem. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's try it with a real simple one. This is a poem you've all heard many times before, I'm sure. Uh, Roses are red. Violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. So let's go through those five questions. One, summary. What's happening in the poem? He's listing flowers, he's got roses, he's got violets, and he's comparing uh, the poet's love to sugar. You are sweet, sugar is also sweet. Okay, very, very quick. What figure of language do you see? Well, let's see. So there's some imagery. Roses are red, violets are blue. It's giving you images in your mind of red roses and blue violets. Uh, there's some imagery in sugar is sweet as well. Uh, and then there's a, that metaphor, that metaphor where, where that sweetness of the sugar uh, is compared to your sweetness, which isn't a literal sweetness. Like I don't taste you and you taste sweet. Uh, at least I hope that's not what's happening. But it's more of, you know, you, 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 you're my sweetie. You make me feel sweet. What figurative language do you hear? Most, most people will hear that rhyme, that blue and you. Uh, there may also, people might point out some alliteration with roses and red or with sweet and so. Not sweet and sugar. Those are two different sounds, right? Shh, ogre and sweet. But sweet and so might be some assonance or consonants, assonance with and so are you, right? Um, but mostly it's going to be that rhyme, blue and you, and it's going to be a very simple meter. Roses are red, four syllables. Violets are blue, four syllables. Sugar is sweet, four syllables. And so are you, four syllables. So very simple meter, very simple kind of sing-songy uh, kind of poem. So what does this figure of language do? That imagery, the metaphor, that rhyme scheme, the simple meter? Well, it sets up an expectation of the rhyme, right? At, once you get to that sugar is sweet line, you expect a rhyme with blue, right? Because you've got do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. It's got that meat, it's got that tempo to it, right? And so you're expecting that rhyme. And so it's very bold and very simple uh, adoration, right? It's very, it's very, it's a very simple poem. It's kind of, kind of what's expected, right? And that can be very effective in certain cases, right? You know, this is a, the theme of this, this poem is very simple. I like flowers. I like sugar. I like you. It's a very bold, simple declaration of love of let's be sweethearts. Let's be Valentine's, which is what you hear all the time. Okay. So 
we were able to look at the simple poem and sound pretty intelligent while doing it, right? So let's try it again with the red real barrow and see what we can figure out. So again, summary. So much depends upon a red real barrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. So, okay, okay. So, so this is a scene with a wheelbarrow, a red wheelbarrow, and white chickens, right? And there's some rainwater, and then there's that so much depends upon. So four different lines, okay. So what figurative language do we see? Well, again, we've got that imagery, red wheelbarrow and white chickens, okay? And then the metaphor, there's a slight metaphor with glazed with rainwater, right? It's not actually glazed. It's not like a pottery glaze, but it's, it's, it looks like a glaze with the rainwater on that red wheelbarrow. What do we hear? So here where we hear is we hear enjambment. Enjambment is when they take line breaks and put them in odd places. You might see that with wheelbarrow, right? You expect those to be on the same line. You expect rain and water to be on the same line, white chickens. And so he's, 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 taking, he's taking your expectation of line and kind of breaking it. And that makes things take longer. And the other thing I see, I hear is a lack of punctuation, right? There's no capital letters here, no commas. There's just that one period right there. So what does this do? This poem takes forever to read. Think about if this was one sentence, right? So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. But this poem takes forever for our mind to go over. And then there's that question of what depends upon that wheelbarrow? What depends upon that red wheelbarrow? And you could talk about many different things. You know, maybe this is a, a, a farmer. And so, you know, his, his livelihood depends upon that wheelbarrow. You know, so much depends on it because if that wheelbarrow isn't there, the farmer can't uh, grow his crops and then uh, he can't continue to be a farmer. So when you're talking about theme, you talk about simple farm life, talk about what separates the fortunate for the, from the poor. That wheelbarrow allows that farmer to continue being a farmer. If he didn't have the red wheelbarrow, he might not have a farmer. And then there's there's a lot of almost meditative, like it's almost like a, like a, what, it's known as a Zen koan. It's almost a meditative poem uh, with that enjambment, making it, making it take so long. And so there we're able to talk intelligently about this poem. Again, we're able to say, okay, this is a scene about a simple farm life, about, about, about uh, what depends on a red wheelbarrow, right? And that question of what, what, what depends on it. Okay, so that's about it. So use those five questions uh, to, uh, and to, to look at the poems and analyze them a little bit deeper and figure out, okay, so what figurative language do I see? What figurative language do I hear? And then what does that figurative language mean? And then from there, you'll be able to do the summary and the theme just fine. If you have questions, uh, go ahead and give us a call or uh, an email and we'll help you out. All right. Have a good one. Bye.